Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Sang, for joining us. Uh, you know, uh, inviting me. Uh, again, a month back, we uh, uh, celebrated the, you know, your journey in new the TV, uh, you know, uh, journalism world uh, lifetime achievement award. I want to start with that one question: that uh, when you look back at the journey uh, and how TV has evolved over a period of time, what changes do you see in the the biggest shifts in the newsroom that that have occurred? over, uh, you know, maybe a couple of decades? So, uh, I mean, that's a long journey. So, uh, I think what has uh, changed in the television newsrooms, I think the most important change has been that uh, journalism is no longer limited to one medium. So, I think, in fact, when we talk about television news, I think we have to realize now that news cannot be put into the boundary of the screen you're watching it on. And I think the best news stories are the ones that transcend that. So, for instance, the screen or the TV, in a sense, can be a front page of a newspaper, it can be the home page of a website, and it can be your mobile screen, and it could be a television screen, but is it cable or smart TV? So I think those are the different uh, challenges, but I think what remains essential is the core, which is how, what's the headline you'll find that any good editor, you'll come and give them a brief for a story, and it can ramble into... 10 minutes, but any good editor will cut you short and say, what's the headline? And I think that's really the point of it, that what is the one piece of information you're giving the viewer, the reader, uh, the online, uh, whatever, netizen, that they don't know already. And I think if your story doesn't have that, you need to go back and try again. So I think that's uh, really different. But uh, I think the various things you have to compete with, being a video journalist, being a print journalist, being a television journalist is very, can be daunting for newcomers, but I think uh, if they realize that basically it's about the basic, how good your story is, that would help. And that's the biggest change you're seeing in newsrooms around you now, that no newsroom is limiting itself anymore to being just television or just print or just digital, it's integrating. So you'll hear integration and convergence as the big buzzword now for the next years ahead. You know, well, one, uh uh, other thing that we often hear about television is that television is toxic, there is no news, it's just an ampli amplification medium. Uh, how do you respond, uh, I mean, how would you respond when people label television as these? I think the biggest enemy of television news has been television itself. So I think I do have to say that uh, I would agree with many people who feel that uh, there is some element of television which has become toxic. It began with uh, what was quite new to Indian television about, say, 15 years ago, the talk format. And when it began, it was exciting. It seemed to be a situation. And at NDTV, we were lucky that we had a situation where even uh, the, the prime minister had joined a debate once on the big fight. We had Ms. Arun Jaitley and Mr. Kapil Sibyl who often would agree to come and debate with each other on any of our shows. So we were. Those were times when you had people of political gravitas uh, and intellect which would have very strong opinions of their own but would also have the, the dignity and the intellect. I think you again this boils down to the intellect of listening to another person's point of view, of accepting that this uh, person who is de uh, debating with me is not necessarily someone who is my enemy. But I think after talk TV uh, evolved or we had a outbreak of channels and uh, very different uh, politics uh, at some point coming in as well, that it became about a political enmity and that the, I actually won't confine that to politics. It became about who scores the most points. My point of view is better than your, your point of view and it's who can shout louder. And once that uh, fueled into what I would really say is toxic, is a toxic uh, TRP system, it just became worse and it spiraled out of control. So I think that is a problem television news has faced. It's a problem television news has to fix. I think there is some realization of that happening now. And uh, I hope there will be a change. And the change will come really from the people who are watching when they say that we feel this is not what we want to watch on our screens. I'll ask you two more questions. I want to throw this forum open. Um, what is your uh, view on ratings? Well, as you know that NDTV has exited ratings, I mean, it's not necessarily a permanent decision, but we do feel that the ratings have limited journalism. And I do think, and this I've said earlier as well, I think 
journalism, because I mean, again, I don't want to limit it to television. I think journalism is something which is at the end of the day for public interest. And you cannot have public interest being rated in as if it's a Bollywood film at a box office. At the end of the day, it's not only about what you feel that people want to know, but what they should know. So I think, and that again is where I think the roles of editors uh, play is a very important uh, uh, role in a newsroom or in any the newspaper or any online site. Because eventually, when you, why would you watch, say, NDTV or India Today or Times Now versus another channel? You're watching it for an editorial point of view. And I think that is something which is extremely critical. I think that's what separates one TV channel from the other. I think that is what had, uh, for NDTV, was a major differentiator. So I think the TRPs kind of flattened that out. It became all about entertainment, and it became, as you said, toxicity, I think, was linked to TRPs in many ways. But I think that hopefully will change. Again, I feel in TRPs, it cannot be a monopoly system. You cannot have a ratings agency, which is just one for such a, it's a, and it's a multi-crore industry. So you need to have more ratings agencies, and you need to have much, much more transparency. I mean, the same standards we demand from politicians, from government, is the standards which we demand from agencies which say that they determine what India watches. I mean, as I think Sukumar made the point, there's no one India, and no one agency can determine what India watches. Absolutely. My final question, you know, recently we saw this uh, banning, boycotting of 14 anchors, uh, and, and there was a lot of uh, backlash on that. Uh, do you think that is, I mean, uh, there could be a better way of, you know, uh, kind of dealing with uh, a non-cooperative media? Or, I mean, there's a better way of doing this than by courting anchors? No, of course. I mean, firstly, why should media be cooperative? <laughs> no, in the sense, no, no. Uh, not in that sense. I mean, yeah. say they could have, you know, kind of done it in a different way, yes. No, I absolutely am against boycotts in any form. I said, I do feel at the end of the day that we do have courts, you do have other ways to address if you feel an anchor is uh, crossing a line. Uh, I mean, I don't support boycotts in any form of any anchors. Okay, okay let's open this uh, to some questions. Okay, uh, those who have not asked questions here, please. Yes, please. Good morning. As Rahul Amsar mentioned, TV is being toxic. Uh, do you think digital media will replace one day TV media? And second question is, uh, you talk about convergence, TV media, digital media. Uh, is it because uh, the TV is being taken as toxic elements so the TV media want to attract digital media audience? Or they are, I mean to say, are they forcefully doing it? Or they want to uh, explore in that section also? See, I, again, when we say TV, I don't want to generalize. I don't think all TV is toxic. I'm part of a television. I'm very proud of it. But I do think that there were very toxic elements which emerged, which we need to fix. And we need to fix it urgently before viewers lose faith in the medium. Television, and I mean, toxicity, sadly, can transcend any medium. So you can have digital media, which is toxic. What worries me about digital is the fact that I think we're creating many, many echo chambers. You know, People will watch only the anchor they like or the view they agree with. And I think that's really, really dangerous for any democracy, and especially there's so many young people for young people. Because this is the time when you need to explore, when you need to explore different ideologies, where you need to look, uh, you know, differentiate in fact and fiction. Really, that, that has to be the key thing. Now, if you're listening only, it's, news can't be a playlist. So it can't be just what you'd like to hear. And I think that that's one of the issues that with uh, YouTube, that we see many, many journalists who have extremely loyal fan following. I mean, it's almost like political fan followings. And they will follow them. And if anything is said by that journalist, it is truth, whether it's X or Y. There's no challenging. You have to have the same challenging uh, perspective, whoever you're watching. It can be the, somebody who's very senior. It can be somebody who's very junior. So I don't like that thing of digital where it's become about it. You don't need editors. You don't need two points of view. You don't need three points of view. You need only my point of view. I think that is something which is uh, in digital is not great. In fact, young people should use digital to listen to a diversity of views, especially views you don't like, because that makes you think. And one further question. Uh, Ma'am, it is uh, said that at least in digital media, there is clear cut that uh, he is from left, he is from right. But in uh, frontline media, or uh, you can say in TV media, there is an envelope. That envelope is covering that he is not from any side. 
बट द बट दे आर बायस्ड मतलब दे आर बायस्ड इट इज इट इज अ टाइप ऑफ एलिगेशन डू यू डोंट थिंक दैट दिस डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन द डिजिटल मीडिया एंड द टीवी मीडिया आई डोंट थिंक सो बिकॉज़ आई डोंट थिंक दैट यू हैव टू डिक्लेअर एलिजेंस व्हाई डज इट हैव टू सी एवरी एवरी पर्सन इन दिस रूम विल हैव अ पर्सनल बायस दे विल वोट फॉर समवन और द अदर द पॉइंट इज दैट आर दोस बायसेस रिफ्लेक्टेड इन देयर प्रोफेशनल वर्क right so i think that's i mean it can be anybody it could be a journalist of course but it can be somebody who's a doctor it can be somebody who's a policeman it can be someone do those biases reflect in the professional life can the viewer see the bias that's the problem if the viewer feels that this person is biased because of his personal views or personal affiliation that is that is an issue but sh- hopefully viewers are smart enough to know and if they feel and we've seen that also that if if there is some journalist who's seen as biased there is a backlash so i don't think that will change on digital or television or that in digital it's all right if the person declares the allegiance the point is journalists should not have political allegiances in their professional lives personal allegiances of course many journalists have it i am married to a politician so that is a separate issue but the point is does our work reflect that thank you ma'am okay okay anand our colleague from samacha for media yes hello ma'am hello idhar ha anand parashar samacha for media अब मैम अभी करंटली जो चैलेंजेस फेस कर रहा है टीवी वो है सोशल मीडिया से डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म से एक चीज बहुत देखने में आती है जिसको ऐसा लगता है कि न्यूज चैनल्स इस चीज को लेके गंभीर नहीं है वो है फेक न्यूज क्योंकि सोशल मीडिया में बहुत तेजी से चीजें फैलती हैं और टीवी में जो कई बड़े प्रोग्राम्स होते हैं कई बड़े इंटरव्यूज होते हैं उनकी छोटी सी क्लिप को वायरल कर दिया जाता है और जब तक स्पष्टीकरण आता है क्लेरिफिकेशन आता है वो लाखों करोड़ों लोगों तक पहुंच चुकी होती है तो इस दिशा में एनडीटीवी किस तरीके से काम कर रहा है और आने वाले दिनों में किस तरीके से आप इस चैलेंजेस को फेस कर रहे हैं एडिटोरियल में कैसे आप इस चीज को फेस करते हैं कि ऐसा कुछ कम से कम एनडीटीवी के प्रोग्राम के साथ तो ना हो नहीं ज्यादातर वो फेक सर्वे आते हैं जो ओपिनियन पोल्स या ऐसे कुछ आते हैं क्रेडिबिलिटी इन दैट एरिया so usually the focus so far has been on fake news in the newsroom so you know to how to make sure because especially jaise aap uh, aapko pata hai that often viral videos come so straight away the newsroom wants to put it on air ki this is an, an earthquake somewhere or this has happened here but we have seen in uh, some situations especially in tense situations like riot situations or communal situations putting fake videos on air has very very real consequences so our real focus has been on how to fix fake videos uh, fix meaning make sure that they don't get on air that has been our big worry we haven't really looked at whether ndtv clips are being misused on digital media as soon as we get to know of it of course we issue statement legal rights but it hasn't been a major focus yet because the big worry has been how to stop fake videos from going on air okay yes please we have 10 minutes so yes we will we'll come ma'am ek ek aur mera aapse chota sa sawal tha anand ji sorry offline ha Some good morning <laughs> ma'am so good my morning. question is that tv media uh, is heavily burdened by advertisements so whenever we see a channel reporting something most of the screen is covered with advertisements so the anchor is at the top of the corner he is not very much visible and everything is covered with advertisements so how do you perceive that i mean what are your point of views i mean that is an economic uh, reality i think uh, sukumar will agree with me on that we all need ads we to pay salaries we need ads to have budgets uh, news budgets uh, we need ads for various reasons so we all try to be creative about it so it doesn't actually interfere with the content but i agree that in some places uh, it sometimes covers a huge portion of the screen but it really is something that is an economic model which until it's fixed or until we come up with alternative ways i mean one way of course is subscription but uh, most people are used or prefer to see their news free so as long as that is happening the only model of revenue is actually through advertisements so there's not much choice uh, left there and you also see sometimes yes. so many panelists and and a speaker and at a different forum said this is a ravan school of journalism anyway sir, okay. no sir, the ravan school is the one with the many heads many heads yeah uh, that's yes, it <laughs> एक मिनट मेरा सवाल वेलकम टू यू हां मेरा सवाल सर एक छोटा सा हेलो मैम दिस इज पंकज शर्मा फ्रॉम समाचार फॉर मीडिया एक छोटा सा सवाल है मैम जैसे आर्टिफिशियल एंकर है या ये एंकर है न्यूज़ रूम में इनका इस्तेमाल बढ़ता जा रहा है तो आप इसको किस रूप में लेते हैं चुनौती संभावना या आप इसको किस तरह से देखते हैं सॉरी आई कांट हियर यू जो एआई एंकर्स जो आजकल यूज कर रहे हैं न्यूज़ रूम्स में तो उसको आप किस रूप में देखते हैं चुनौती के रूप में या संभावना के रूप में आपका क्या मतलब इस पे क्या विचार है आपके 
No, I think it's it's interesting, but I don't think an AI anchor can ever replace a real anchor. But I think it's interesting. It's a it's an interesting uh, model. It's an interesting gimmick for now. Let's see how it unfolds. AI, of course, can be used in newsrooms, but it, it it always I think it needs a human intelligence as well for the editorial decisions. So I mean, of course, I think it I'm sure it can help in maybe compiling lists and uh, news lists and things like that. But uh, I don't. I mean, I don't think AI anchors is something we. Finally, we've made for entertainment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Sonia. Uh, Sorry. I'm a student of Dhiraj. Uh, I'm a student of uh, IMC. Yes. New Delhi. My name is Dhiraj Kumar. Hello. This Dheeraj. is a headline from Wire. Amit Adani's takeover. Senior journalist Ravish Kumar resigns from NDTV. So the, my question is: Half hour change in ownership of media channels. affects the content of news channel i don't know if i should answer that or you should answer that <laughs> all right let's, let's go to the next one okay yes i just if any brand of course the biggest uh, bonus is credibility and i'm sure that any management will be looking very carefully at that aspect but i ultimately the decision of the judge of credibility is not the person in the newsroom but all of you yes ma'am see i think it can be used almost it will be used much more on a conveyor belt way so i think there will be that uh, element of it of course that it is efficient there's a speed so it will be incorporated into newsroom operations but i still believe and maybe i'm old fashioned that in journalism it is the individual which makes the difference still i mean all of you will have individual journalists individual bylines individual stories which is something which is really premium and i think in a world where ai can replace a lot of things i think individuality is something which uh, hopefully isn't i know it's on its way that ai can even mimic individual characteristics but the original will still be better so it will be a challenge it will be a challenge especially for young people coming in but i think that's where it's extremely important for passion commitment dedication the willingness to go the extra mile for young people which will uh, prove crucial now hello ma'am aapne pucha ha yes yes so we we are waiting for our honorable governor he'll be here in next 10 uh, 16 minutes has said so we can stretch it okay hello ma'am we can get other sukumar up as well yes, or sir, we can get great. other people up no no that well. will be actually sukumar, don't relax. there will less uh, less get please i was in fact thinking if we could do home. now an open forum since we have 15 minutes i would request you to join us you, here you can you get people. one more chair here yeah. yes please yeah I, i just wanted to say something actually which uh, i know rohel kindly asked you for a keynote which i didn't have time to do but one thing i think which we need to look at very uh, seriously in the next years ahead is the democratization of newsrooms i think we've seen that it's happened in politics it's happened in society but i think in media newsrooms especially english newsrooms we are, have failed on that aspect and i really do feel that this is the time when we need to look uh, self introspect on how we reflect the aspirations of uh, rapidly changing india with its opportunities and challenges and see how we get the voices and the journalists to be much more representative of that india i think we still find in newsrooms especially in english tv newsrooms business newsrooms that they come mainly from the big cities like delhi mumbai uh, maybe some from bangalore so i think that is the next big challenge that newsrooms need to face uh, to stay relevant so I think that's what, and I'm very happy that I am see that I see students coming from all over. So I'd love to see those applications much more, but not only I am see because there are many many students who can't get in to uh, such a prestigious institute. So how we broad base is something which is very important for all of us editors to think about. Yeah. I okay. Uh, okay, sir. Ab ab bolye. I have two questions. One is uh, is TRP being purchased? <laughs> First question. <laughs> second question i don't know whether you will be able to answer it or not mm -hmm. uh, because trp in only in the uh, the tv news or this uh, the electronic media not on the print media i have not seen any uh, trp on the uh, print media 
first question second question uh, like in the print media if you see the first page on the political second uh, miscellaneous then third page criminal crime and then sports pages are there similarly the tv channels they should have a menu sports tourism uh, food, okay okay uh, she's, like she's... that that should be a menu oh this tourism i can see on that health i will see at that time okay, ma sure so that's uh, that's a uh, a suggestion you can get that on websites on television it's a bit harder on trp is being purchased well ndtv is not buying so that's <laughs> <laughs> that's all i'll say all right yes yes hello ma'am hello sir uh, actually my question is that what's the actual need for opinion or exit polls like is it actual news for the general public or just for the likability factor uh, just why i want to ask that does it influence uh, the general public's interest or decisions while voting no i mean um, the current form in which uh, polling is done in this country there's very little there's zero scope of it influencing uh, the outcome of elections that was your question right do opinion polls right and uh, everyone wants to know who's going to win who's going to lose i mean this is not uh, unique to this country uh, opinion polling is like i mean it's it's an age old established universal uh, thing that everyone wants to know i mean all over the world have you seen the uh, kind of uh, coverage that goes around the us presidential election i mean there there are uh, websites that spring up which just like do nothing else for an entire year right so um it's i i think it's legitimate journalism what i find especially interesting about it is it's become much more sophisticated now it's become much more broad based now there are agencies that are using really high end mathematical techniques now and of course uh, uh, websites tv channels uh, i've started using really interesting graphical representations of this well, what's not to like it's good fun hello fans raising with this Sir, gentleman here okay I'll, I'll i'll come to you i'll come to you okay uh, good afternoon uh, my name is saksham and i am a student as well so uh, my question was that uh, like for example there's a media house which works in uh, like focus on law so uh, and if that media is just focusing on digital platform so uh, what can that digital media do exactly to be successful enough because there's a lot of competition going on sorry this is a media platform which focuses only on law so how does on it law. yes how can that like, like law yes okay yes exactly and how will they be uh, successful enough because there is a lot of competition for example so you said how live stand law, out i mean how can a define success uh, to be recognized because there are uh, two big uh, entities of the sort that you mention in this country both are very well recognized both are uh, i mean uh, uh, live law and bar and bench um, how do you define success you can define success in uh, ultimately because all of these are businesses uh, the only way to define success is profitability right um, so and i guess both of them are adequately profitable because they keep hiring people one of them poached my legal editor 2 years back which means <laughs> you know uh, they must be uh, capable of paying fairly decent salaries right? um and uh, the thing is these are niche media right uh, and and the only challenge that you have with niche media is uh, uh, you your definition of success cannot be cannot be disproportionate right so even if you were to move outside of law if you, if you look at uh, uh, startups for instance there are these websites like ken and morning context which which do a lot of interesting work um, they'll probably be profitable at a certain level but but they're never going to be as large as let's say ndtv right so uh, yeah but, i mean you just have to redefine your uh, so so your your runway is probably a maximum of 8 10 million dollars it's not going to be higher than that uh, and i'm speaking in terms of revenue i'm not speaking in terms of anything else so we you just have to do that i think what's interesting with live law on these other thing is that they identified a gap in the market and i thought that was interesting that they're looking at something they say there's a lot of interest in it uh, media is not really representing this enough so i thought that was a that's an interesting space to look at that if somebody's mad like you know about elections i know people uh, 
uh, Pranoy, uh, Roy, who the founder of NDTV, was obsessed with elections. So it's always nice to take an obsession and turn it into something which, uh, you know, which people respect. So I think that is uh, very important. So I think in that sense, uh, I'm not a business uh, journalist like Sukumar, so profits is always something that has to be drummed into me. But I think they've managed to, you know, fulfill their passion or their commitment. And I think that's really something which is uh, quite uh, laudatory in today's world. But, uh, for example, like... Are you working okay, with okay. them? Are you applying to them? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> because th then we can discuss Ma'am, actually, I, uh, like, I'm a, you know, working under law opinion, and I'm the CEO of it. Uh, me oh. and my colleagues have started it just recently this uh, year. Just a uh, law uh, website? Yes, a website, and we do also have the print media, but, yeah. So it's okay. like, we've just started, we've just taken out the first edition. Oh, power to you. Yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, That's sir. great to do that while you're a student. He has one more question, okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, sir, you, uh, earlier you said that TV media uh, like has weaknesses, and one of the weaknesses are that uh, they are not com like covering the whole nation, the news covering the whole nation. So, why not the other media houses do that to you know cover the whole news? Because I think that this can be a factor for you know uh, being success. Yeah, so I mean there are enough people who do that. What I was telling you was that uh, typically TV gets obsessed with the big story, right? And so. It, Previously, when you used to look at any news, they, you had um, a wide variety of news, both geographically wide and thematically wide, which has now got significantly restricted. So, so if you look at big stories that are playing out, they're just like one story that keeps playing on loop, and, and you know everything else is either not covered at all or not mentioned. Um, your question is, uh, we, why are the others not doing it? Um, the reason, and again I mentioned this, the reason why TV doesn't go uh, broad and wide in this country um, is, is because of an economic reason, right? I mean, you, it, it's just very difficult to uh, have a, a TV channel that covers every corner of this country using, you know, uh, cameramen and videos and everything else, and, and you know, it's just far too expensive. It's, it's far easier. Uh, it's, it's much more economically viable to have the talking head uh, format of journalism, isn't it? It is cheaper. Well, you know, it, it falls into that same kind of TRP model because, again, if you're, it, I don't, TRPs are measured by boxes. Now, if your boxes are in certain geographies, so Mrs. Bombay will have many more, or Mumbai will have many more boxes than, say, Assam. So then, it presumed the logic then translates, you do more news out of Bombay and less out of Assam. Now, if you're going to follow this logic in a newsroom that you only do news which will get more viewers, it is going to be something which will tilt your editorial balance or your editorial width, uh, breadth of uh, your coverage. So I think that is something, again, which it, there are many, many questions about the current TRV model. And uh, I'm a big thing that when we look at the BBC model in the UK may not be the ideal one, but I do think we need to enter a phase in India where we look at journalism almost as an essential service and then cannot be kept with all the same pressures and pulls of uh, also being a profitable business. There has to be some kind of a rethink on the revenue models. And I think for television especially, the revenue models currently are very, very faulty. Thank you. Thanks. Um, OK. OK. Uh, you have asked already one question. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Mike. Uh, oh, hello? Actually, yeah, Mike, the revenue well, models yeah, are faulty for everyone at yeah, this point in time. Uh, yes. Not hello? just television. Yes, yes, I mean, it, it doesn't work for anyone. Hey, Mike, coming Yeah, yeah I can, we can hear you, yes. We can hear you. Go on, yeah. Sir, I have two questions, sir. One of them has asked you. Where are you from? A little introduction. I am Kamle, sir, from AJ, IMC. Sir, I have asked you two questions. One of them has asked you, sir. Sir, the question is... No, no, it's okay. We're listening. We're working. It's working. It's working. It's working. No, no. Your mic is running. Sir, the question is that when there is a big deal in the country, then you can see the new channel. Like in the lockdown, the new channel has a lot of subscribers on YouTube. They have 19 million or 20 million. Like when the lockdown came, after that, now it's 50 million. And the new channel is running. There is no new channel in the country. There is no new channel in the country. There is no new channel in the country. There is no new channel. कुछ ऐसी होती हैं सीमा इधर का केस वो मतलब चलता ही रहा दो महीने तो इस तरीके से मतलब मुझे जानना है कि हम भी रिपोर्टर बनने वाले हैं कुछ समय में और कंपटीशन तो ज़्यादा है ही तो हम ऐसे कैसे कैटर करें कि फाइनेंशियली भी सपोर्ट कर पाएं अपने आप को जर्नलिज्म भी संभाल पाएं दोनों बहुत कॉम्प्लिकेटेड है ऐसे ट्रिवियल स्टोरीज ना करें हाँ राइट यू वॉन्ट आंसर इट सोनिया 
As in, I haven't. So, really so he's saying uh, like we uh, run Seema Haider uh, story for a couple of months, and he's at the verge of getting into journalism. How does he save himself from Seema. getting into? NDTV didn't cover the Seema Haider story very much. I was wondering, what cha cha, what Seema Haider story, ha? No, just if you go to any, the, it is a challenge, of course. You are in media houses, me hiring for, but I would say that the big. issue is if you get a good if you get a job in a reputed media house hopefully you will not be covering stories like seema haider all the time but i know that's difficult i think in the first two years just do everything do everything try everything work harder than anyone else that really is what is going to make you stand out the first two years of your journalism life will set your future so you just have to at that time don't say ki mai this is not me this is not me don't just work hard work hard your work will speak for itself and then take a call after at least 2 years but give it 2 years of commitment of passion and dedication and then take your call and uh, it's very important to also be uh, innovative and imaginative about this um i mean there is a gentleman here from my organization who's sitting who who, who anchored a page 2 story and page 2 stories in hindustan times are these gigantic stories on sima haider uh, we were one of the first newsrooms to cover it and it was a very sensitive story of what was happening so there are ways in which you can do it so i think sometimes what happens is um, and and i often tell people this story from many many years ago i will not name the individuals concerned because both are now very famous uh, so one was a marketing reporter the other one was a long form reporter they used to sit next to each other in my newsroom when i used to work in mint and uh, the marketing person got a press release from pepsi about a new flavor of chips that had been launched so she looked at it and put it on the table and then this guy looked at it and said do you mind if i follow this up so she said uh, mint doesn't cover product releases so he said no i know but i just want to look at it so then he reached out to the company he asked them how do you decide which flavor to launch so they put him in touch with one guy who does research on flavors in india and he did this fabulous 2000 word story on how companies decide what flavors to use for their products in india so you know it's just a question of being so there are stories all around us part of your job as a journalist is to identify what is a story and how to tell it और आप मतलब सर बोल रहे हैं कि आप उसमें भी कुछ ऐसा ढूंढ सकते हो जो बहुत ही अच्छी स्टोरी बन सकते हैं और मेरे ख्याल से अगर आपके प्रश्न को तर्क वितर्क के रूप से देखा जाए तो अगर सीमा हैदर की न्यूज़ में दम नहीं होता तो आज इतने बड़े फोरम में उस न्यूज़ की डिस्कशन नहीं हो रही होती और सर ने इससे पहले भी बता दिया एज सोनिया जी ऑल्सो सेट दैट दो साल आपको जर्नलिज्म में मतलब ऐसा नहीं है आपको भागना है राइट सर यू सेट दैट राइट दो चार साल लगेंगे आपको वो सब देखने में टफ लाइफ राइट वेल आई लाइक टू टेक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी आई जस्ट रिसीव द क्वेश्चन एंड आई लाइक टू कोट इट इट सीम्स पीपल आर सींग मोर are being seen more eager to use social media digital media and short news apps like in shorts where do you think the future of print media is going with all this nowhere i mean <laughs> like i said we, we are the only uh, uh, first of all we don't define ourselves as print media right i mean i never say i uh, every time someone asks me i say i work in a newsroom because we've always done a variety of things um in 2008 for instance when i was in mint i gave every one of my reporters a high definition handheld video camera to shoot videos and post them on the website right irrespective of whether there is traction or not i mean so we everyone is pretty much a multimedia journalist now but i think the advantage that print has at this point in time like i said is that we seem to be the only people who are investing in journalism and journalists and reporters Uh, many other newsrooms are not really investing in uh, research they're not investing in travel they're not investing in reporters uh, their their focus is, seems to be investing in other things right and and that gives us a natural advantage um, it is an advantage that is rapidly drying up because print business models themselves are under challenge so the question is how do you sustain a profitable newsroom uh, with revenues coming down and and 
but uh, so print is not going anywhere. Right? First of all, I wouldn't define it as print. Right? Journalism is not going anywhere. And, and I think a lot of us, uh, if you ask Sonia, she's not going to tell you that she's a TV journalist. She's a journalist, just like I'm a journalist. And uh, 10 years from now, we'll probably still be journalists. <laughs> but, you know... You mean like politicians will never retire? Oh, God. No, but I, I just was taking her from what uh, Sukumar says. I think, again, so this whole investing in journalists, and I think that's something that I and uh, Sukumar, of course, and are extremely passionate about. And I think that's why this 40, under 40 is something that we spend our Saturday mornings coming and doing, because it's so fantastic to see young people who really, I think, often... Uh, you think, just you asked, that you know, young people, nobody cares about young journalists. I think they really are the future and the hope of this profession. I think investing, I think NDTV had become, is still an institute where I know that once they've got the NDTV tag, that other television channels will grab them within a year at much higher salaries. Yet many of them have stayed on despite that because they believe in uh, NDTV and that's really something which makes us all very happy. And I think the Chief Justice said recently, you can be a good lawyer and a good person. And I think that applies in journalism as well. You can be a good journalist and a good person. Your, our responsibility today is to mentor the next generation. I see so many people sitting here, Tessin, uh, Ankit, Priyanshi, many people sitting here who will go on to do many things. But the point is that the ethical core of a good journalist will never change. That's what we hope good editors can give wherever they are. And that's really, I think, what this whole function about today is and I think now we should let them have a coffee break. Yeah. No, one, one last question, one last question and we, we and the chief guest has okay. come and uh, one right. last question. Yes. So, uh, hi Sonia and uh, Sukumar, a question on uh, citizen journalism. Can you please uh, introduce yourself? Yeah. Okay, so oh, this yeah. is Anurag Kulsreshta here. Uh, hi Sonia and uh, Sukumar, we've exchanged some emails also. So, a question on citizen journalism and uh, I mean, why is it that we are kind of, you know, there aren't any forums or platforms in terms of when, uh, you know, some, some real uh, happenings and events need to be shared by individuals? And I know, I mean, most of the channels and you guys uh, look at it more as a, you know, uh, as, as a topic or a subject. So, except for one or two recent platforms like InShorts, uh, so what is it that, we, you know, we can do? How is it we are, we are addressing? Because uh, when you try to reach out to channels, it's not easy. And I've tried myself, including certain stories on, uh, you know, crime, law, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, police, etc. And uh, uh, when people try to raise voices, etc., you know, they bring out the reality. Their phones are hacked and whatnot. So, so what is it that, you know, can, can be done on that? So uh, citizen journalism, I mean, we just had Elon Musk at the US-Mexico border doing citizen journalism. But I have to say that what the only thing that worries me about citizen journalism is the lack of editorial controls and balances. It had become very popular about five to eight years ago when it became this kind of buzzword in citizen journalism. But there were problems raised with how much of it was on individual interest with the fact that there is no editorial oversight on stories like that. What is the source? What is the motive? What is the reason? It became a bit of a problem, which is not to say that this is, there's been absolutely fantastic citizen journalism done. But I think there is still, we haven't managed to work out a kind of a system where there is all the alarm bells are taken care of. I'm sure it can be worked out, but it's something that I think uh, newsrooms haven't managed yet. So I'm still a little bit wary of it. Though, of course, there are many, many cases where stories would not have come to light or huge exclusives would not have happened without citizen journalism. So it's not something which uh, we, I'm against in any way, but I do think that there are some questions, which is why many, some newsrooms stay away from it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, that, that's it. Uh, oh, my God. What do we do with these two questions? Okay. All right. Okay. Please go ahead. Yeah. Here's another NDTV product. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh,